Hello and welcome to Future Consideration, SB Nation's weekly NFL draft show. That's Dan Rubenstein. He watches a lot of college football. Yes, I do. And that is Matt Ufford. He is our NFL mm -hmm. guy. We're going to dive into things right now this yes. week, talking about this week's mock draft from our friends at Mocking the Draft. Let's start at the top. Jadeveon Clowney, your clear number one, no matter who is picking there, needs to go there? I think so. The only thing the Texans might do, uh, if they're going to go with a quarterback, it seems readily apparent now that you can afford to trade down and yep. get a quarterback. So yes. I think that's a possibility. But Clown is such a you know once in a decade sort of talent that you kind of want to go for him. Is so enormously yep. high. Greg Robinson, we've seen him around here in previous weeks. The Rams offensive tackle in the NFC West. No qualms. No qualms. You want to make that investment against the NFC West tough defenses. Yep. It makes perfect sense. He's gonna hurt somebody. I hope not. <laughs> Khalil Mack, thank you, Seattle fan. <laughs> go Seahawks! Uh, Khalil Mack, who seems to be as polished a product at his position as anybody in this draft, going to Jacksonville and Gus Bradley. That ja that Jaguars defense with with Bradley as a defensive minded mm -hmm. coach is is gonna make some news this, this this coming season. I think. Yes. No. There is an actual nice core there, mm -hmm. and Khalil Mack would only add to that. Sammy Watkins at four. Clearly the number one receiver, probably one of the best receivers in multiple draft classes, going back to maybe A.J. Green. Cleveland fit? I I don't love it for Cleveland. They already have Josh Gordon there, and I think right. they have bigger needs than wide receiver. Right. That said, I don't think you're really going to regret drafting Sammy Watkins. The reason why I think it's okay, even though I'm generally anti-receiver, is he's so versatile. He can help out in the return game. They can run him on end of rounds. He can do a lot of different things. And number five, something you I love like. It. For entertainment ear value, ear. Johnny Manziel to the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I think about this is Reggie McKenzie and Dennis Allen are on the hot seat. Yes. They're going to have to turn that team around this year. Uh, with Matt Schaub at quarterback, do they, do they go with a playmaker, someone who right. shores up the defense? I don't know. I feel like there's a smarter decision to be made, but when Johnny Manziel and his ceiling as a playmaker is there, and that fit with Oakland, he'll wear face paint in a game. He'll I go so. silver and black. He'll do whatever. He will be he will be sainted in Oakland. Yes, it's hard for me to really complain. Let's jump around a little bit. I think we both like this pick. The Bills and Eric Ebron at nine. Yeah, the, the Bills are kind of set. Like Scott Chandler is a is a, He's fine. a is a perfectly good tight end. Yes. But I also do like that uh, explosive playmaking tight end, especially when you've got that young quarterback. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, the security blanket yep. of a big target who can get around on the field, get open from it anywhere. And I and like you look, it. look at the secondaries in the AFC East. Obviously, New England investing in their secondary yep. this offseason. The Jets play really well mm -hmm. back there. So getting a playmaker like Ebron can only be a good thing. The Giants at 12, Taylor Lewan. You know, we both have said many positive things about Taylor Lewan. We think he's going to be a very yes. good tackle in the NFL. But when we talked about the Giants team needs, they, they have needs on the offensive line, but it's all towards the center of the right. line. I kind of would like to see them more invest in the center uh, center or guard position, mm -hmm. but I guess if you're picking at 12 overall, that's that's really not where the it's value, a value is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm okay with it. You're fine with it. Okay, Odell Beckham. I like that he's higher than he's been in recent mocks because I think he is he's very very good and did a great job for many years for LSU to the Steelers who have purchased some wide receiver talent recently. There's, a, there's been kind of a revolving door wide receiver right. for the Steelers recently. It'd be nice to have someone uh, be uh, a staple number a staple one, hold there. down one side of Next the field. Next to good old Antonio. Yeah, that would be really nice, especially as Big Ben is in his prime and it's sort of a you have to win now if, the, if you're Big Ben. Baltimore with Zach Martin. Uh, of course, the Ravens had a historically inept running game yes. in uh, last year, and that's largely because of a terrible offensive line. Mm -hmm. Also, Ray Rice not getting any younger. No. Um, and so, yeah, of It'd course. be weird if Ray Rice was getting younger. That like, would be strange. What is going on with Ray yeah. Rice? He's 15. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Zach Martin. Uh, but, but so you've got someone who's versatile, who can play both tackle and guard. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Yes, especially on the right side if it's going to be a tackle but can move inside on a pinch, obviously. Mm -hmm. CJ Mosley to Miami at 19. Weird to think about him falling this far because I think, and we'll get into this in a little bit, he's the clear number one inside linebacker. Mm -hmm. But Miami and their needs there, do you like it? Uh, I think it actually there, there have been some rumblings of Mosley falling in the draft stock kind of just because linebackers tend to slide down the board a little right. bit. We saw it with Manti Teo last year. Yep. But uh, it makes a lot of a sense for the Dolphins. They have a lot of money tied up with linebackers, mm -hmm. but they're not very good. They don't right. have a lot of talent in that position. I like the pick. Yeah, and the, the front still needing help last year. Deion Jordan perhaps not working out like they thought yeah. that high in the draft. So. 
I like it. And finally at 32, your Seattle Super Seahawks Boing. with Cyrus K, which could be a huge value if he's if he turns out healthy. The they certainly are drafting to fill a need there. Lost Breno Jacomini in free agency. Yeah. If Quanjo stays healthy, he'll slide in to start at right tackle right away. I think it makes a ton of sense. Just the old fingers crossed. The the Seahawks got burned just a couple of years ago with James Carpenter, a first round pick yep. who never panned out at guard for them. Yeah, who would have thunk? But it's a nice I, I like this mock. Whew, we're getting close to the draft. That's one of our last mock draft yes. reviews. Let us know if you agree or disagree with your team's choices. Whew, that was fun. That's a good one. All, All right. Let's move on. Let, what do we have? Inside oh, linebackers. Got a lot of good ones. Let's start off. There's an obvious number one this year. Yes. As you rank your inside linebackers, CJ Mosley of Alabama. Alabama. Roll, Roll tide. Tide. Okay, CJ Mosley, very heady, very smart player. You look for the same things in inside linebackers across the board. How good are they sideline to sideline? How good are their instincts? How good are they shedding blocks? And if in coverage, how good are they running with tight end slot receivers? And he's like good that. at all of those? He's good at every single, he's a little bit slight, but when it comes to being athletic and vicious and shedding blocks, he is the complete package. Should be a top 15-ish pick. The quarterback of the defense yeah, that you want. Yeah, he very much is. He's a great leader. Next, Chris Borland, a guy that I've, I feel like I've been watching for like nine years at Wisconsin. <laughs> One of those guys that the, the announcers love. He played seven sports in high school, and he just tackles 173 people a year. He's productive, high motor, is not like going to wow you at like a combine or anything like that, but he's just going to make play after play. Yeah, the the knocks are that he's only fi only 5'11". Yes. Uh, so he, he might slide a little bit because of that, but he had a great week at the Senior Bowl. Yep. I think he'll do well. Very consistent player. Shane Scope, somebody that's had some injury issues at Stanford, but has anchored that Stanford defense. We've seen them shut down everybody in the Pac-12. He's a vicious hitter. He's very athletic, good sideline to sideline good in coverage, can get a little bit too good, like a little too out of control, a little bit too excited, but Shane Scope is he's an anchor guy. A little worried, I don't think he has an entire last name. No, he doesn't, but he has a mohawk. <laughs> he grew up in Mexico a little bit. Okay, that counts okay, that's, something. That, that, is, that is a plus. Yeah, Max uh, Bulla. Bulla. Bulla, I know you like saying that name, so I wanted to give you an he opportunity. He sounds like an Aussie, Max yeah. Bulla. <laughs> Max Bulla, he's a very smart, very vicious player, really good size, was suspended for the Rose Bowl, everybody was talking about that against Question Stanford. Question mark. Character, no, he is, he is very, very good, very strong. He is somebody that, it feels like he should be wearing a neck roll. Oh, okay. He's a neck roll a type player, yeah. So I, I really like Max Bull a lot. Anchored a very, very good Michigan State defense last year. And number five, rounding out your choices for mm -hmm. inside linebackers, Christian Jones yes. of Florida State. Very fluid, very athletic, sort of a, a nouveau linebacker in that he can go sideline to sideline. Very athletic, good in coverage. Needs to be able to mix it up a little bit better with his hands, disengaging blockers. But Christian Jones was one of the best players on a national championship And defense. the Seminoles, uh, versatile too, because the Seminoles yeah. use him at defensive end as a pass rusher yep. sometimes. So has, uh, all, has, has all sorts of experience all over the field. All right, so there you go. Those are your top five inside linebackers, according to Mr. Rubenstein over That's there. True. Now let's go to, I had an exclusive, <laughs> not actually exclusive, <laughs> interview with A.J. McCarron talking about Ooh. preparing for the NFL draft. Nice. Talking about the journey from college football to draft day with A.J. McCarron, three-time NCAA champion, twice as a starter for Alabama. A.J., welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and leap out on a ledge and say, do you think that you're the best quarterback in this draft class? Well, I mean, I, th I think any quarterback should have the confidence to say they're the best. Uh, it's, it's not a cockiness uh, about you. It's you got to have confidence um, within yourself to be successful. and. Uh, I believe you got to have it to be successful when you get out on the field, so um, yeah, I do. So how do you, for those who don't have that perception, for those who say, oh, he's not a top five quarterback in this year's draft, how do you go about changing that perception between now and May? Well, I, don't, I don't think I, I have to change uh, everybody's view. Um, you know, the good thing about the draft, only one team drafts you, so you only got to change one mindset. and. Uh, and that's, that's my goal, um, but right now I'm trying to do what I can control and, uh, and try to master my craft to the best of my ability and then wherever the chips fall and God has planned, then go from there. What's your day-to-day -day regime like right now? How, how many workouts per day? Like, are you a strict diet right now? What's it yeah, like? I have a, definitely have a, a nutritionist. Um, we have 13-hour days. Uh, our only day off is Wednesday. and. It's really not an off day, it's more of a just a pool workout, so we have to swim a bunch, which uh, he thinks that's an, an off day, but uh, it, it, we definitely get up, uh, eat breakfast, work out, uh, throw, then eat lunch, work out and do speed training, and then throw again, 
go eat dinner, watch film, break down board work and stuff like that, and then eat another dinner later so, that night. So pretty relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can do it. <laughs> uh, AJ, thanks so much. Good luck to you in the draft come May, and good luck preparing for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Once again, thanks to AJ for taking the time to yeah. talk to us. Be really interesting to see where he ends up on draft weekend. I like him, but he's, he's about the fifth best quarterback in the draft, but that's great. Yeah, I'm not the fifth best quarterback in the draft. No, I'm nowhere near there. Yeah, I'm just the second best host on this show. Yes! Folks, that is another episode of Future Consideration. Circle May 8th yeah. on your calendar. Before the first round of the draft, we're going to be live right here at 7.30 and on your internet. That's 7.30 p.m. Yep. We're going to go over the last mock draft right before the first round starts, and then... 11 p.m. right after the draft ends, or even maybe while the draft is still going on. We got guests, we have analysis, we're going to studios. Big, big draft party to break down all things first round. Can't miss video. Be there. We'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.